Hey, what's up guys? Frosty here. I wanted to try to squeeze in a hand of the week video for you guys before the end of the year. Uh, get something up in December. So I've got 12 hands from my most recent session that I played today. Um, and I hope you guys will find them interesting. Might be some fun spots to talk about. I don't really remember all the hands. Um, uh, specifically, I just basically loaded up the top 12 uh, biggest pots that I played from today. So some hands will be probably very standard. We'll just glance over them. Some might be more interesting and we'll talk uh, more about them in length. Um, cash games have been sort of mad this month. Um, I started off the month by hitting like a 14 buy-in downswing at 100 NL, something like that. And then I've just kind of been slowly chipping away at it and I'm finding myself up literally a few buy-ins at the moment. Um, action's been good. Uh, I just haven't been running particularly well. Um, can't really claim that I've been playing amazing either though, so it is what it is. Um, I'm sort of in no man's land in, in terms of hitting the next milestone bonus. I think I'm sitting around around 260k VPPs. Um, so yeah, pretty much no shot of hitting the 300k, which is unfortunate, but um, instead I'm just kind of aiming for uh, a team online bonus, which I should clear in a few days, trying to wrap everything up by the 23rd so I can just enjoy the holidays. Um, chill out, relax, and get refocused, get reset, and amp things up in 2015. So yeah, with that said, why don't we jump into the first hand here. I don't want to drag on uh, the intro uh, for too much longer. I'll definitely be talking about my plans for next year more in detail uh, in the coming weeks, I guess. So yeah, here we go. Pocket Kings. Um, <laughs> right away, I'm going to show you a pretty, pretty non-standard hand, but... Um, it's probably worth talking about the fact that you always do want to be looking for certain spots and um, tendencies to exploit rather than just playing a super standard game all the time. I think it's important, especially at small stakes, when there are such um, like great ad advantages to, uh, to taking non-standard lines some of the times. Um, anyways, so we open. Uh, we get called by a rag. Folds around to uh, this guy playing 56-33 with 13% 3-bet. Uh, pretty much never folding any hand. Um, seemed pretty aggressive, fairly crazy. Uh, I'm definitely expecting him to 3-bet when I open, which is always nice. And yeah, and then it's just, do you know, do we want to just 4-bet or do we want to basically shove? I mean, pretty sure this is never going to be a good spot to call. Um, and yeah, I remember this hand because uh, I, I had lost a hand. Like This was like literally the second last hand of my session, I think. And I had lost a hand just a few minutes earlier to this guy by taking a bad beat. So And he had, he had a fold to three bet of zero, I think. Like literally zero over, you know, whatever sample size. Fairly small. But I, I just had to just rip it in here and just uh, expect to get called quite often, I guess. I mean, you can obviously make it 24 or whatever, and I think it's fine. But yeah, you can see this guy just ran his stack up. And like I said, I mean, he literally has never folded to a three bet. He's just playing every hand. I just expect to get called often enough to just slam it in here and just try to maximize value uh, at pre-flop. And also, it's kind of interesting with the reg behind me. Um, certainly worth talking about. I think it depends on how much attention this guy has been paying. If, if he is aware of what kind of opponent we're up against, um, he can definitely have like an uncapped range here. Like, if I was this player, I would definitely call with pocket aces pre-flop. I would just never ever be three betting um, my nutted hands just because I would ex I would expect this guy to, to three bet himself or at least call and come along and do something crazy post-flop. So, um, this guy can definitely have an uncapped range and I definitely expect it to be... Um, I don't want to say I expect it to be strong because he's definitely playing like um, all his lower pocket pairs this way or suited connectors this way as well, but he can still have a super strong hand here. Um, but that doesn't really deter me from shoving just because I think it's al I think it, it almost works out better for us just by shoving here, uh, even if he does have a strong range, um, mainly because I think I think he can like kind of think of a like a combo of reasons why he could talk himself to calling. Um, one, just by shoving here, I mean, it seems fishy, but it, it really does make our hand look more like ace-king. <laughs> uh, 
and if he's sitting there with jacks or queens, he might talk himself into a call, uh, thinking that this guy might call it off with a low equity hand. Um, and two, he might just think I'm shoving here with um, with like an extended value range, basically. Like you, like it would it wouldn't be unreasonable for me to just shove ace queen here or ace jack for value, um, given what I think this guy is going to call with. So yeah, if if he thinks I'm doing that. Um, and if he thinks he might get a decent price, uh, given what could potentially be a $300 pot, if the if the weaker player does come along with whatever he has, then I, I could definitely see him calling with worse. Whereas in a normal situation, um, you know, I'm not just going to like rip in kings because I'm just not going to get called by worse often enough. So anyways, uh, he ends up calling and when he does, or he ends up sho reshoving, I should say, um, um, sorry, I had to get up for a second. I <laughs> completely lost my train of thought, um, but I'm back now. And yeah, I mean, what was I saying? Um, this guy can potentially call me with worse. Uh, oh yeah, so he reshoved, and um, he can definitely have aces, like I said. But again, like he can have have other hands too. I think so. I'm feeling okay about the spot. Um, this guy ended up tanking literally his entire time bank, time bank, and he ended up folding which I guess is unfortunate, but um, I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty convinced he would have called even if, if this guy had folded. Um, when this guy reshoves to 200, you know, then this guy's got to really think about it. <laughs> um, whereas I think he would probably just snap off with whatever, 100 BBs deep. Um, but yeah, it becomes a little bit tougher to call, call with his random stuff when this guy reshoves for 200. So anyways, um, that's that run of the hand. Um, you know, we still lose to aces, but uh, he has ace king, so uh, yeah, worked out nicely. Um, yeah, okay, I remember this hand too. So, pocket kings on the button. I, I choose to call here, and the reason for that is because of this guy behind me in the small blind. <laughs> yeah, now that I think about it, it's sort of interesting that um, you're gonna see like in a couple later hands. Um, there'll be there'll be new hands against the same opponents, um, which kind of dictate what I, why I've been doing some of these things. Like in the first hand, um, you know, I just shoved because I figured he he would call me because he was playing kind of crazy. Um, you'll see a hand against that guy later, and then you'll see a hand against this guy later, which actually occurred before this hand. Um, which is why I choose to call here. So maybe I should have switched the hands up, but I think it's, this is kind of cool this way too. So anyways, the reason I'm calling is just because he's got a 16.5% three bet and he's just been three betting like crazy. I don't know. I don't really know. He seems like he seems like a new rag. Maybe he's moved up from 50 and all. Uh, he was on a bunch of tables, but he was just playing uh, really loose, really aggressive. And this isn't, um, this guy's super nitty too, in my experience, like he, his fold to three bets insanely high. So, you know, even, even if this guy doesn't get involved, uh, I don't mind calling Kings here, um, given positions like against players that just fold to an insane amount of three bets. Um, just because we essentially isolate ourselves up against aces and just fold a lot of worse stuff. So there's, there's, there's a lot of value to be had just by calling, um, post flop too. Um, but yeah, I guess the main factor was um, because of the small blind was being quite active, and uh, he does go ahead and squeeze, which is awesome. Um, under the gun folds, and yeah, my plan is to basically back raise here um, because it doesn't look credible at at all. <laughs> so that's basically what I'm hoping for, and I just kind of min click it back, and uh, yeah, he ends up jamming. So hope he doesn't actually have aces. I mean. I, you know, I, I can't like really say this read is super concrete, but you know, you don't have uh, a huge hand sample on guys that are unknown. So you just do the best you can. So, um, yeah, I like my back raise just because again, um, if he is a thinking player, it, he's going to think that I'm probably three betting Kings, um, Queens, you know, aces, and my hand really just looks like something like pocket tens or whatever. Um, as it turns out, I mean, we sort of just cooler him anyway. So again, going back to <clears throat> what I was talking about, about in terms of my read, I mean, it's possible that this guy, this guy had just been three betting a lot because he's been getting a lot of hands. So I don't, don't really know too much about him, but looks like we just cooler him in this hand. 
but again like you're gonna see a hand coming up where which actually happened before this hand so which makes me um which made me think he was a little bit loose and i'll save that for later or right now because yeah this is the hand i was talking about so uh yeah we get a weaker player limp in standard iso and um our buddy three bets us to to 12. Uh, this guy comes along and I think at this point we just have to call. Um, we can still call even if this guy folded given given the price we're getting with um, a fairly playable hand but it's definitely closer and probably more of a fold um, especially since this is like this is like the first hand I've kind of had against this guy and I'm not really sure um, what kind of range he's uh, attacking me with here. Um, but anyways, given that this guy calls, I just think we have to call um, pretty much our only option. Flop a flush draw, and this guy checks. Um, so like we could bet here, but I just I just feel like it's um, it's usually going to be worse uh, than checking to the preflop raiser. Um, you know, we're assuming the preflop raiser isn't ever folding an overpair, so. You know, if we bet, we might get him to fold like ace king or ace queen, um, which you know is obviously good. But I feel like those hands, if ace king slash ace queen or whatever bets, there's a pretty decent chance we can get them to check fold. Um, maybe not. Maybe some. You know, it depends on how how aggressive the guy is, I guess, or what he's thinking. But somebody could bet call here with ace king. But even then, we're basically 50% equity anyways, unless it's obviously a king of hearts. Um, so yeah, it, even if he calls, we're, you know, we're fine. And if he's ever folding, then we're just making a ton of money by going for the check raise. And it, even if it gets checked through, I think we can just bet the turn and, and win a lot as well. So I, I just prefer check, uh, check raising rather than just betting here. Uh, folding is pretty much out of the question, I think, given, given our flush draw. Um, given that we don't really know what this guy's range looks like, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, if this if this player is, is tighter in general, and we think he always has like queens plus here, um, then we can kind of assume we have no fold equity, and then we can kind of just call a bet, or depending on his sizing, we could even fold. Um, but without knowing that, I think the typical aggressive player is probably going to oversee bet this spot a little bit too much. And we can probably make more money by check raising. So I check any bets. Um, pretty standard sizing, I guess. Um, this guy folds, and like I was talking about earlier, I think I think I just like check jamming here against um, against what's essentially an unknown. Um, even if he does have an overpay, we have about thirty percent equity, which isn't great, but. If he's ever bet folding here, we're just making so much money. Um, if he ever has a worse flush draw, which is pretty unlikely, he could have like you know seven eight of hearts if he doesn't want to call. Uh, yeah. Most of the flush draws like he can have, he probably would just call on the button. You would think, but you never know. So I go for the check raise. He ends up calling. We end up hitting, and then the board pairs, and he has ten six suited. <laughs> so I mean. You can kind of see why um, why I wanted to trap more in that king's hand that I just showed you. Um, just because he's the type of player to, to re-iso with a hand like 10-6 suited. Which, you know, I don't think is necessarily bad. I, I just think, you know, I think it's definitely on the looser end, obviously. And, like, in general... In general, I think it's I think it's just too loose to be c-betting, or to be three-betting, like... Again, like it's fine, especially if he thinks I'm just folding a ton and isolating really wide. But he has no blockers to anything. Um, he, he's definitely going to get 4-bet here quite often. Uh, he still has to worry about the weaker player potentially check-raising. A lot of people like to do that. Um, or even check-calling and then just never folding. Um, and even in, in this spot, you know, uh, we almost... Uh, 
we almost got there against them. So I don't know. It's just a little bit loose, but I think it's fine. But but that's why I basically went for the uh, for the trap play with the pocket kings because he was just uh, three betting so wide. I figured if I call with the kings there, um, there'd be a good chance he would he would squeeze loose lightly lightly again. And um, and yeah. So the other hand worked out. This one not so much. <laughs> Um, okay, don't remember this one. Um, oh, okay, so this is this is the one that happened right before the uh, the other pocket king's hand where I just jam preflop against this guy. Um, so yeah, Tim Stone calls. He pretty much never has anything here. He's just always three betting for value against this guy. Probably has a blow pocket pair trying to set mine or yeah, some weak suited connectors. But I think even those probably three bet mostly. Um, so I just, I squeezed to 11, which is a little bit bigger than my standard sizing. Uh, exploitively, I could probably just make this like $15 and this guy will never fold, but you never know. I, I had an even smaller sample size on this guy um, than I did the, the previous hand. So I think making 11 is fine. Uh, he calls, this hand just turns out to be super standard. Um, he checks, obviously MC betting, somewhere around three quarter pot or whatever. Uh, he check raises. His check raise was really high too, so I wasn't even too concerned about it. Um, I think it was like actually 100% over a small sample size. So um, just his range is just so wide here. There's just nothing to do but but jam it. The board the board is a little bit wet, um, and if he does have a hand like 10-9 um, or whatever. Uh, we don't want like a king to come off or an ace to come off and um, either kill the action or scare him off. So it's a very standard hand, and he ends up having pocket sixes and rivers the straight. So sucks, but you know he had some equity on the flop, but um, not too much to say. Um, okay, so we got Buddy raised into three. Uh, playing 32-21, half stacker, uh, didn't recognize this guy, um, standard 3 bet for value. Uh, we get overcalled by, I'm not really sure what to make this guy. Seems to be, um, he seemed to be on a few tables, so he seemed to be like somewhat um, reggish. Um, but he's playing 35-26, so I don't think his overcall is necessarily super strong. Um, you know, he's probably got the typical pocket tens, pocket jacks, pocket queens, ace queen, ace jack, um, maybe something like 10 jack suited, um, etc. And then this guy four bets, I think, uh, I think in general, I'm just happy when he reopens the action so I can just jam this hand. It just plays so much easier. Um, we get, you know, we gotta be a little bit worried about this guy, but at the same time, um, there's just not much else to say against the 32-21 unknown player when we have ace-king, 50 big blinds deep. It's just always going to be an all-in. Uh, they just, you know, he can over overvalue certain hands. He can do random stuff. Um, there's just not too much to say. And this guy reshoves, uh, and this guy calls, so... It is what it is. I'm not really sure, too sure. Um, I still think we can have the best hand here a decent amount of the time. I think we can also be crushed uh, by by one of them um, as well. Board runs out. Uh, not very good for his king. <laughs> and uh, the overcaller had jacks, and the other guy had aces. So, uh, sucks. But, yeah, like, I mean, this guy... Even in, even in hindsight, I would play this the exact same way because um, a few hands later, there was a hand where like I opened the cutoff and he called from the blinds and then he uh, donked an ace high flop, uh, continued on the turn and then just gave up on the river with like nine ten offsuit for like no pair no draw. So um, yeah, I'd land the, like he's definitely capable of doing some random things. So I think even if the hand came up again, I would still play it the same way. Unless you showed me aces every single time. Um, all right, finally we've got the aces. Standard open, three bet. Uh, this guy's pretty crazy. Um, he's like, I don't know. In my experience, he's like nitty, but he also just does some weird stuff. Um, like there was a hand he played against somebody else on another table I saw today where um, 
he got check raised and then just jammed with like bottom pair or something like that. It was insane, but I don't know. Anyways, um, he's pretty aggressive too. So this is obviously just a dream spot and turns out to be pretty standard. Um, flop the nuts and he jams pocket eight. So, I mean, his jam there isn't necessarily crazy or anything. I'm just more talking about my experience with the guy in general. Still, like, obviously on the looser side, you're not going to see every rag just jam eights here, but I don't know. I probably 4-bet fold enough where, where it's fine. Um, aces again. Standard ISO. Overcalled on the button by a rag, I think. Flop top set. Pretty good start. Obviously going to bet. No point in getting too tricky here. I mean... Yeah, it's just not much else to say. We can't really expect this guy to do the betting for us too often if we check, just given how many aces we have. Um, he calls, checks. So yeah, I mean, I remember this hand now. The turn, it's kind of interesting. I think, like, I think in general, betting is by far going to be the best option. Um, yeah, I chose to check. I, I, I don't know, I might have just like had a feeling, like a feeling in game, it sounds so fishy, but um, this guy, this guy is, he's playing like 41.9, which is a pretty big, it's a pretty big indicator of passiveness and that he's not like super crazy. So I just felt like he, he uh, there was a chance he wasn't just peeling the flop with what I would assume most standard weaker players would, like including lots of gut shots and stuff. And... I was I was kind of worried about the flush to be honest, but also I just I was also kind of worried about getting two streets of value, um, and like the stack sizes are just a little bit awkward. Where as, where if I bet here, if I bet around twenty bucks, um, I'm basically committed. Um, if he check raises, um, and I think if he check raises, he almost always has a flush. Um, so yeah, I think stack size was my main reason for checking back. Like if he was a hundred big blinds deep still. Like it's definitely a bet because I can comfortably call a check raise anyways, and then just hope the board pairs or hope he gives up with a bluff or 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 was check raising worse for value and checks or or whatever. But yeah, I was just a little bit worried about getting check jammed on here against this player. And um, like I said, it sounds a little bit fishy, but I kind of just like had a feeling that he might have a flush in the game. So I check back, and the plan is basically to call any any bet on the river, any non spade bet on the river, or um. Or just get it in on a paired board. And pretty much a dream river card. And he goes for full pot. So he pretty much always has a flush or a lower full house here, I would say. Um, not much else to say. I just jam it in. Um, and he did have a queen high flush. So I don't know. Worked out worked out perfectly there. But um, like I said, in, in general, I think it's better to just bet the turn. Um, just because again, we don't even have a spade, so we don't even have like a lot of protection on, on the river. And I think most people's ranges are going to be wide enough here that <clears throat> they're going to call again with, with potentially second pair with a pair plus draw. Um, maybe they had like king queen off suit with like the king or queen of spades and they're definitely going to call it the turn again. So I, I think it's better to, to bet the turn, um, more often than checking, uh, against, against most players that are limping, but um, uh, against people that you just have a feel for or, or a specific read that they aren't those type of players that are going to be peeling the flop that loose, um, then, you know, go ahead and check back the turn because they're going to have a flush a lot or you're only going to get one street of value anyways. Um, okay. Um... Standard 3-bet against a 50-41. Not too exciting. Pretty good flop. Not the best flop to get action on, but safe enough. Um, standard C-bet, nothing to say. Calls. Mm, not the best turn, but again, like his range is just so wide. I think we just want to keep betting here. Um, I got 24 into 37. I think it's fine. Um, He's he's almost at the point where we can just put them all in on the turn here, but um, I mean we're essentially doing that with a bet like this anyways, and it might seem a little bit less scary if he has a king with a weaker kicker or um, maybe a turn to queen or or you know whatever he's eight seven whatever he doesn't want to fold. 
and a nine on the river. Um, so I mean, yeah, like he he can potentially have better here, but I just don't think he has better often enough for us to ever check this back. I think he still has a lot of ki the nine isn't great. Like he can have king nine, he can potentially have jack ten. Like if he if he called the flop with jack ten, um, which is obviously loose and not good, but people could do it. They're definitely not folding the turn. So it, it's out there. Um, eight nine is definitely definitely in his range. Uh, King queen is definitely in his range, though he's probably just check jamming the turn a lot, um, or at least sometimes. Um, but he's still got he still got so many kings, and I'm not just talking about king jack or king ten. He can definitely have like king two suited or whatever. Um, he can still have like eight seven, ace eight. Like I, there's just enough hands, and just given how much money he has left, anyways, um, I think it's just a clear clear bet. Doesn't need to be talked about too often. Um, but yeah, didn't work out this time because he had queen nine, which is obviously absurd. I mean, his flop call is completely terrible. Uh, his turn call is still terrible, but more understandable. And then the river call is obviously good, <laughs> but just insanely lucky that he went runner runner. But enough of that. Enough of that bad beat stuff. Um. Okay. Looks like I choose to call here. Um. I assume it's because I'm trying to keep this weaker player in the pot slash similar reasoning to before where i don't know about this guy specifically i don't have all his stats up in front of me but if he folds to a lot of three bets there's just a lot of value in calling i mean there's there's obviously a lot of value in, in three betting still but it looks like i'm just trying to keep this guy in the pot more more than anything else um and i mean 55 5 there's a pretty good chance he's coming along um and we get a flop like this which is nice he checks he checks all right standard bet not too much to say. He calls uh, six on the turn. I, I think we just bet again every time here. He has flush draws, one pair, pair plus draws, a whole bunch of stuff we're ahead of. He, he definitely has stuff that beats us too, but I think just given how wide his range is, just not too much to say. Three quarter pot bet. Uh, he calls six on the river. Six is actually pretty good. It's pretty much a complete blank unless he has six seven or something like that uh, similar kind of similar to the hand i just showed you with um with river betting again i just think i think there's just so much stuff that um that he has that we're beating that it's just a super standard value bet on the river here uh, especially given the fact that the flush shot missed if he has any pair i just don't expect him to fold it so again he can definitely have stuff that beats us here but i think he has mostly stuff that um that isn't beating us and and yeah, he's going to fold all his flush draws anyways, but I, like, I would expect him to pretty much always call here with like a 5. So I think it's just an easy value bet. And he calls, and we end up winning this one. So pocket 7s. I mean, that pretty much just proves my point. Um, basically, any time a flush draw misses, the chances of you getting called by a weaker player, um, by any pair, if they have any pair, just go up immensely. So pretty slam dunk value bet, just like I think the last hand was as well. <clears throat> um okay standard iso pop the nuts get let into for seven bucks um this guy had just donked into me a few hands before as well and i can't i can't remember what, what happened in the rest of the hand um but yeah this wasn't the first time he did this um, anyways, um, we fought the nuts, you know, do we raise a call? If if I thought this guy was donking a tighter range, I would just go for the raise right now, just before a scare card rolls off on the turn. Um, but yeah, if somebody's donking very wide, then I think it's just a clear call, just because he's going to have random bluffs. Um, we just don't need that much protection. Uh, scare cards, potential scare cards could turn into potential bluff cards for him. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So I just call, break on the turn, and he jams. Um, <laughs> not too much to say. And uh, he ended up having six, seven of clubs. So yeah, we actually had a nice fade there. Um, yeah, I mean, like donking that hand isn't completely unreasonable, I would say. But 
I also don't limp call, which, um, so I don't, yeah, I mean, I can't really speak too much to, to his ranges or how he plays his ranges, but that actually seems like a reasonable hand to, to lead. <laughs> Uh, another pocket aces, always nice. So this time I don't get cute, just go for the three bet, not much to say. I feel like this is going to be a pretty standard hand. Um, here I actually prefer jamming, um, unlike the other hand. I think calling is fine too, but I think usually when somebody bets the sizing, they're just never folding anyways. And again, similar reasoning, I just think scare cards can come off. Um, if he has, if he's sitting there with like pocket eights or like pocket tens, and like a king comes off or a queen, uh, he might shut down. Um, and yeah, I don't even think he'd fold ace high here too often. So I'd rather just jam and hope he calls off um, right now. And he does, and he has a seven. So not too much to say about that. All right, this will be the last hand, and. I remember this hand, and I'm not exact. I'm not thrilled in the way I played it. Um, so we got a 22-16 opening from MP. Um, I choose to flat. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely nothing wrong with flatting here. Um, it looks like we got a weaker player in the big blind too. Not as a as um, an attractive hand to to trap with, but you know, still fine. Um, I think my default is definitely the three bet though, and then I just you know you you it's important to flat sometimes. Um, so given that there's a weaker player in the big line, I don't really mind flatting here just to just to put um, put some you know ace king into my flatting range um, in this spot. Um, but yeah, generally I like three betting a little bit better. I think it just especially the offsuit ace kings just play a little bit easier and a little bit better in my opinion, but. Yeah, it's definitely good to mix some ace king into your calling range in, in different spots, um, uh, at, at least at some frequency. Otherwise, if the board comes ace high, uh, your opponent can pretty much just go bet, pet, pet, and it's going to be really hard for you to call down because there's only so many combos of sets, um, and you're probably not perceived to have ace king super often either. So it it can definitely work out um, quite well. And even if you know your opponent doesn't bet three streets, if the flop comes ace high or king high and you just have them out kicked, um, you're pretty much guaranteed to win at least two streets of money. So it can certainly work out in, in a lot of situations. Um, and then this the same guy who, who jammed eights, um, small blind versus button, goes for the squeeze. Uh, he, he doesn't have, he didn't have like a huge squeeze percentage, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't that tight either. Um, yeah, I, I chose to flat here, which I think is probably best. Um, just given positions, his his squeezing range here should be fairly tight to begin with. Um, even though my range is fairly wide and this guy's is somewhat wide, um, you don't want to just be going crazy here because <clears throat> because regs will flat with strong hands occasionally on the button, and you know obviously he's got an uncapped range. Also, this guy in the big blind thirty seven twelve is likely coming along with a lot of hands, so you don't want to just be squeezing like say like ace nine off suit or you know something that's just not going to play um very well post flop um but anyways i like calling here because i think uh forwarding and getting in is going to be okay but um by calling i think he i think we keep all his dominated hands in and i think he's going to um i'm kind of making the assumption that he is squeezing a little bit loose here and, I'm, and I think that uh, he's likely going to start firing on cards that actually hit us. Um, so, you know, king high flops, ace high flops. Uh, he's probably going to bluff at least one street on. So, uh, again, there's value. There's value in doing both, really. Um, it comes down 10-6-6. Six, six, and he C bets. And, you know, I, I can already tell this hand's going to be, be getting a little bit messy. But, um... I checked this C-bet in 3-bet pots, and it was like 100% over 8 hands or something like that. So he's literally C-betting every single time. And this is, you know, a dry enough board where I would assume he would C-bet everything. Um, obviously, he can still have, he can definitely have over pairs. Um, he can have the same hand, um, and then he can have ace-queen, ace-jack, and some other random stuff that he was squeezing. So 
I think it's a little bit too weak to fold here. And I think our range is going to be, be uh, perceived as um, having a ton of pocket bears in it. So if he is just firing with like, say the same hand, I think there's a pretty good chance we can win, win the pot on the turn. I don't think he's going to double barrel or triple barrel extremely often as a bluff here. Um, and we can definitely have pocket tens. Um, we could potentially have like six, seven. Um, so yeah, I think we do have some nutted hands in our range here as well. Um, turns to seven of hearts, which is definitely better for our range than his range. Um, yeah, we can definitely be floating two with say eight, nine with, um, with backdoor draws. So like eight, nine of diamonds, eight, nine of clubs, eight, nine of hearts. Um, uh, like I just said, we can have six, seven, we can have pocket tens, we can have pocket seven. So it, it's definitely a better hand for our range, I think, because I think he could potentially have those hands that he's squeezing to, but I just think it's less likely. Um, so he checks and that's a little bit of a tough spot. Um, like I don't expect him to fold any pair pretty much if we bet, but I also think that he, I think we probably got all the bets we're going to get out of his ace axe hands and he definitely has a lot of combos of ace king and if we can get those hands to fold um obviously that's going to be a lot better than uh than than just getting to showdown and chopping and even if he has like ace queen or ace jack or whatever um like i said i don't think he's just going to bet again so we might as well just deny his equity right now um and i'm not sure like how often he's going to be checking an over pair here rather than just betting himself um and so, like, stuff I'm going to be checking here is, like, how often somebody's check folding, and if they're check folding, like, a super high percentage of the time, I'm just going to go ahead and bet and take it down. And, yeah, I mean, like, we definitely have some showdown value if we just want to check through, and people will definitely be trapping here still sometimes, but um, I, I think it's I think it's probably better to just bet right now, and it's probably, uh, probably a decent play for our overall range too like we don't want to just always have like over pairs here and like sets and stuff we want to have some some stuff that we are floating with um uh, just so we can have some bluffs i guess um but i mean obviously we're just hoping to take it down anyways but i, I choose to bet here and i don't think you have to bet very big i could probably get away f i should probably actually be betting like smaller than this i should probably go like a third pot or something like that um but yeah i don't think it matters a whole lot I essentially just saved my money because I just I just don't think he's gonna like check call very often with like Ace King, even if I bet say like fifteen dollars or sixteen dollars or whatever. So I could probably save myself a bit of money um, the times that he actually has um, like an overpair or 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 better. Um, so he checks calls, which is, is surprising, um, and I'm just I mean I could I could jam here because like I said I definitely do have some nutted hands. But I think in practice, it's just not going to matter if he has, say, jacks plus um, anyways. Like, I just I just don't think it matters that I have pocket tens here sometimes. He's just probably still going to call because he has pocket jacks and it's an overpair and I could just be bluffing or, or value betting worse somehow. So I think it's a little bit bad, I guess, to, to, to follow through here in a spot where he can definitely just, like, check call with aces and... And, um, and I'm not really, I'm just not really sure how, how often my bluff is going to work here if I jam. So it's kind of like an exploitative, exploitative check back. Uh, I, I guess you could say, um, trying to exploit the fact that I think he's just never, uh, never check folding, um, with a pretty strong range. Um, even though I would love to follow through and bluff here because I, when he check calls, I just don't think he has, I don't think I have any showdown value anymore. And I think he's usually not super strong like i think he's usually got something around pocket jacks or or like 10x even um where it's it's very tempting to just shove and try to push him off it but i like to check back and he showed me queen so i definitely don't think he was folding that if if i jammed but i mean you never know but uh, yeah i think i think his play is fine i think i think is it definitely worked out the best for him um in, in this spot for sure but it's probably better to just go bet bet shove himself but um yeah i don't know pretty interesting hand good hand to end, end the video on so um on that note i'll wrap things up and like i said uh stay tuned to the blog and i'll be talking 
talking more about the uh, about the year to come, and uh, I'll basically be doing a yearly recap um, within the next few weeks. So let me know what you guys thought of the video. Questions, comments about any of the hands um, are always much appreciated, and I'll be sure to take a look. So thanks, guys. This has been Frosty. Uh, yeah, have a good Christmas. Have have a happy holidays. Uh, if I don't uh, don't see you guys uh, before then.